Well, interestingly, if you read the whole of those Spanish reports, what they say is that the United Kingdom and Gibraltar do not accept those positions and have not agreed that in the context of the negotiations. So uh, that is in the same report. So you can see that we're coming close to the conclusion. Everybody's trying to use all of the tools at their disposal in this negotiation. I still believe that the negotiation stands a better chance of succeeding and that the people of Gibraltar have a better chance of achieving the final objectives that we have all set for ourselves here and want to see achieved if the negotiation is not carried out in the respective media of each of Spain or Gibraltar. Actually, people may be forgiven for thinking we're going back. These are issues that have been on the table throughout the negotiations. Why are they still there at this late stage? Remember that at the moment we are negotiating an agreement between the United Kingdom and the European Union, which will be the treaty that we've all uh, sought to achieve. That treaty can only happen because the United Kingdom and Gibraltar want it to happen, and because Spain, the member state of the European Union that has an interest in that agreement, has itself sought that the European Union should negotiate it. So why do the UK, Spain and Gibraltar push this? Because we've reached an arrangement called the New Year's Eve framework agreement, which is a political agreement, which enabled us to say that there was a way forward to resolve issues such as this. In the New Year's Eve framework agreement, we had resolved these matters in the way that we had set out there. That was eventually leaked to ironically, the same Spanish newspaper that's carried this. And that led to the positions being provided very openly by Spain and by Gibraltar, that we had agreed that Frontex would be assisting the Spanish police for an initial period of four years and the discharge of what we accept are its responsibilities for people's ability to enter or not enter Schengen, and also recognition that only Gibraltar will decide who enters Gibraltar. So this has been litigated already. We've reached a balance which was acceptable uh, to all sides. Am I surprised that there's an attempt to relitigate a key issue at the last minute? No. Um, should we fall into the traps that might be being set for us by the by those who are on the other side of the negotiating table? Because although we get on, we of course have different objectives, or indeed by some elements of the media or some other elements who may not wish us to reach an agreement. The important thing is to keep calm and ensure that we continue to work towards the ultimate objective, which is a safe and secure treaty, which is beneficial to Gibraltar, that's my job, which is beneficial to the area around us, that's the job of the negotiators on the other side of the table, that enables us all to get up off the table without having to accept things that are unacceptable to each of us and ensuring that we all win and take this forward. That's what we must do. So Chief Minister, where does that leave us if this is unacceptable to Gibraltar in the UK and Spain is saying, whether they're up in the ante or not, they're saying it at this stage. Where does that leave the negotiations? Negotiating. Negotiations are about negotiating until you reach a conclusion. And that conclusion can be that you have done a deal that the parties consider is good for those that they represent and therefore they decide that they've reached the moment of agreement or when you reach a moment of no agreement. That's why we've always said that we continue to plan for a no negotiated outcome in the event that it is not possible for us to reach an agreement that doesn't include things which are unacceptable to us. This is the process and you know, what we shouldn't do is panic towards the end of the process. What we must do is be professional in the way that we approach this, understand that there are issues that matter to the other side in the same way that there are issues that matter to us, make very clear what our positions are in respect of those things and do so respectfully and in a way that is designed to ensure that we can keep going and ensure that we can find solutions. And indeed, in many respects, you know, always look back to the New Year's Eve framework agreement, which is what enabled us to start this European UK process in the first place. Well, the Spanish Foreign Minister actually made reference to the EU's draft mandate as a base. This, of course, was unacceptable to the UK and to Gibraltar. It's the EU's mandate. It's how they start the negotiation. Of course, um, when you start a negotiation, the reason you're having a negotiation is because the other side wants something you're not prepared to say yes to. Otherwise, you wouldn't be having a negotiation. You would have had an agreement. So the UK um, Gibraltar mandate is the New Year's Eve framework agreement, which the EU itself said had issues for them. Spain couldn't be saying it had issues with the New Year's Eve framework agreement because Spain was a party to the New Year's Eve framework agreement. 
so look this is complex I, I don't apologize for the complexity it's also riven with potential pitfalls for Gibraltar I, I don't uh, pretend that there aren't those pitfalls there it's my job to ensure that we navigate around them and I come back to the point I was making to you when, when we started this interview the same reports that say the things that you have referred us to also say that the United Kingdom and Gibraltar have not agreed those things and are insisting on an alternative. I'm not commenting on the veracity of anything in any press reports. What I'm saying to you is that the reports contain both the position that we find unacceptable and a very clear and concrete recognition that the United Kingdom and Gibraltar would not accept those things which we consider to be unacceptable and have not accepted them in the negotiation. You said in Parliament that only Gibraltar would control Gibraltar borders. Uh, you've been saying throughout that Schengen needs to control Schengen borders. That, of course, is Spain as a member state. How exactly will it work? I know that you can't give us the details, but people are confused. Well, you can't ask me how exactly will it work and say that you recognise I'm not going to give you the details. You can give me something. But, but on this, I don't need to give you um, any detail. This is a very simple concept, which is the one on which we've been working all the time, and I've explained on a number of occasions on, on television programmes, uh, on G BBC and generally there are two different borders these are not the same borders these are two different borders one is the Gibraltar border and the other one is the Schengen border in the same way as when you for example um, go to King's Cross you're dealing with uh, the Schengen border at King's Cross and you're dealing with the UK border or at Paris Gare du Nord you're dealing with the the Schengen exit border and the UK border those are different ways of managing the thing but you're dealing with two borders the UK border and the Schengen border that's the same principle here you don't usually find these things at an airport but you can find them at an airport for example at Dublin's Shannon Airport you're able to clear American immigration and therefore, when you arrive at the United States, you arrive as a domestic passenger, as if you were flying from Texas to JFK rather than flying from Dublin to JFK. There are many different formulations, and the New Year's Eve Framework Agreement enabled us to find the right balance to deal with those formulations in a way that didn't cause us to have to cross any of our unacceptable lines, the things which are causing people some element of angst today based on reporting. And we have to be very clear that reporting is reporting and we have, must understand that the government of Gibraltar will not agree to things which are unacceptable to Gibraltar. The government of the United Kingdom will not agree to things which are unacceptable to the United Kingdom. And indeed, the government of the United Kingdom will not agree to things which are unacceptable to Gibraltar because that is the essence of the double lock if those things relate to sovereignty. In the same report, which we shouldn't be <laughs> looking at, um, to the país, he speaks of joint use at the airport. He uses the word use only because that's what the reporter has asked him, whether it's joint use. Are we talking of use and not control? Let's be very clear about this issue. I am not going to get involved in looking at the words that a Spanish minister has used. I'm going to get involved in looking at the words that are on the documents that I am being asked to agree. I tried to make the point in Parliament that I am not the guardian of the pen of the Minister for Foreign Affairs of Spain, and neither is he the guardian of my pen. You know, the, the Spanish Foreign Minister is free, of course, to express his views in whatever way he wishes. And if he wants to follow um, a question that is put to him by a Spanish journalist in the way that he expresses himself, that's a matter entirely for him. What matters is what is going to be in the documents and what we are going to agree or what we are not going to be able to agree. I can give the people of Gibraltar a categorical assurance. I know the politics of Gibraltar just like you and every other Gibraltarian. Gibraltarians are experts in the politics of Gibraltar. We all know the things that were wrong with the 1987 airport agreement, and I know all the things I didn't like about the 2006 Cordoba arrangements in relation to the airport. We're not going to be doing anything which offends any of the sensitivities that we have in respect of those two previous attempts to deal with issues relating to the airport. We've got a very clear line on what we think is acceptable and what is not acceptable. We're not going to cross those lines. But those matter when you look at the documents, not when you look at interviews in the run-up to the last moment in the negotiation. Now is when we have to ensure that we work calmly, to achieve the outcome that the people of Gibraltar want us to achieve, and we don't allow us any, to be taken over the line to agree something which is not what the people of Gibraltar would want to agree. Concerning that we're running out of time, I know that the deadline of the 31st hasn't actually been confirmed, but there may only be room for one or two negotiating rounds before then. 
there's no deadline in the context of this negotiation. The deadline in the Brexit negotiations was set out in law. In other words, the Article 50 notice created a period which ended on a particular day, and you had to get over that period with an agreement, or you had to formally legally extend that period, which is what happened for a short period. Um, and that's why there was a deadline. There was a legal cliff edge. The United Kingdom would stop being a member of the European Union on a particular date, and therefore it would fall out. The arrangements that we have now are, unfortunately, informal. So we, they don't have the force of law. But additionally, the benefit of that is that there isn't a legal cliff edge when those arrangements have to fall away. The uh, Spanish foreign minister has been quoted as saying these things can't go on indefinitely. In that respect, he's expressing the views of all of us. We would all like to finish this negotiation as soon as possible. The end of the year is a moment which is relevant in all our lives, and in particular in our professional and political lives. We would like to get it done beyond uh, by the end of the year. If we're very close, of course we'll continue negotiating. I have no doubt about that. Um, but look, if somebody else wants to say that they're going to get up off the table at the end of the year, even though there's no deadline that requires you to get up off the table at the end of the year, let them be honest and say so. Let them say to their people, look, Gibraltar in 2013-14 was 25% of the GDP of the Campo. That's with Senor Margallo in place. Now we're probably more of the GDP of the Campo. We probably are more than a quarter of the GDP of the Campo. The GDP, the, the GDP of Gibraltar is greatly affected by the number of people who come to work in Gibraltar from Spain. I'm not going to get up off the table on the 31st of December or on the 1st of January. I'm going to keep trying to achieve this, but I would like to achieve it by the 31st of December if I can, and I won't be found wanting in trying to do so. If somebody is simply going to get up off the table because it's not in their political interest to continue, and they should explain to the Campo that their GDP is going to go immediately into recession. And I will have to explain to the people of Gibraltar that we are likely to be facing the same outcome because the negotiation has been suspended for political reasons or whatever. I can only speak for the government of Gibraltar. I'm committed to this process and to making it work without any of our red lines having to be crossed or without anybody else having to cross any of their red lines and without making red lines cross. That's difficult. We are working very hard to do so. There are moments when it looks like we might be there. There are moments when it looks like we might not be able to get there, and we have to try harder. We'll keep trying harder. But I give an assurance to the people of Gibraltar that in doing so, our fundamentals will not be transgressed. I will not allow that. My negotiating team will not allow that. My government will not allow that. And if we are able to reach an agreement, it will be one that is good for Gibraltar and the region around Gibraltar.